guys this is Edna with Square Eye Photography thank you for watching this first of all so I am going to make a 10 part series about the basics of Photoshop and it's definitely for beginners only people that are just getting into wedding and portrait photography or newborn photography and are kind of scared of Photoshop and they've been using other programs Photoshop is very easy to use I know it can seem very intimidating because there's so many buttons and so many menus but really as a portrait photographer I probably use not even 10% of the things that are in Photoshop. Photoshop is a vast program and I want to kind of demystify this and I want to help you use Photoshop and so we are starting with number one. Number one thing that you have to do if you're going to get into portraits, weddings, newborns, any kind of portrait photography, any kind of photography at all, if you want to do this on a little bit more than an absolute just amateur scale, if you want to do some pro, if you want to charge for your photography, if you want to kick this up to the next level or you're a more serious hobbyist, you need to color calibrate your monitor. It is absolute, absolutely imperative. Absolutely. So... There's a few different ways that you can do it. I'm going to teach you how to do it the basically free method and I'm going to teach you how to do it the a little bit more expensive method. So we're going to go with a little bit more expensive method right off the bat just so that you guys know that you can purchase a color calibration tool. Um, I purchased one on Amazon. This is the Data Color Spider 5 Pro. It's 150 bucks. You don't have to do anything. You just plug it in and put it up against your monitor and in a few minutes your monitor is pretty much color calibrated for most pro labs and it looks super clean and it's very easy to use but it's a little on the pricey side 150 bucks and really if you're going with some of the other ones that give you a little bit more options like the spider x elite it's 269 and the spider x pro is 169 but you don't have to use a color color calibration a tool like this you can just do it yourself and i'm going to teach you how to do it yourself it's not as perfect but it definitely is good it works very well and i did this for years and years and years and years and years and it worked perfectly for me so the first thing that you need to do is you need to have a bunch of photos that you've already retouched yourself and that you like the color right you think that this is a beautiful color that you think that this is beautiful color and I would definitely have lots of images available so black and white images sepia color images things that have a bunch of different color here I have uh, like nice sky blues some nice purples some even skin tones nice even skin tones uh, make sure that you have things with different uh, highlights and shadows some blacks and pick a nice set of images that you want to use so this is the first thing that you need to do you need to find a lab you want to work with and most pro labs need you to have a website so you can have a website maybe they'll accept just a Facebook uh, page if you or an Instagram page if you're um, just starting off but you want to call the lab that you want to work with um, I use pro DPI I've done a lot of research on labs I was using pro lab Express for a while but now I'm using pro DPI it's uh, affordable and easy to use it's a rose program so it works on your computer it's an online thing um, but it's very easy to use they are not paying me to say this this is just the lab that I like to use very easy to use and very affordable and you don't have to have like that three thousand dollar minimum and then they take from there look every single order is its own order so what I did is I called pro DPI and I said hey guys I'm gonna I'm gonna switching over to your lab but I need to color correct my monitor can you send me some prints or can I send prints to you now a lot of labs will just send you prints but the best way I think to do it is for them to print your photographs. So they're going to ask you to make a little gallery and they will they will normally do this for free. But I also purchase pictures on top of the stuff that they do for free. So um, I'll do a couple of eight by tens. They might normally do like four by sixes. But normally if you have just a few prints in your order, they'll let it go. I like to make have a little bit larger range of prints. So uh, there might be a small investment of let's say 
10, 15, 20 dollars at the most. If you're okay with just doing a few prints, they might do everything for free. So call them and find out. Um, so they'll normally throw in some free images and all or add more to my order. So some black and white, some colors, some eight by tens or something. And ask them to not make any color corrections to your images. Make sure that they don't color correct anything. Now, most pro labs don't color correct images at all. They will charge you extra for color correcting. So most of the time you don't have anything to worry about. They will color, they won't color correct. So print them without color correction. When you get in your prints, you need to do these steps. You need to go to Home Depot and you need to buy a 5500K light bulb, a daylight balance light bulb. Make sure it's not tungsten and make sure it could be LED, but it's got to be daylight balance. Now, if you live near an art store, they do sell very accurate color corrected light bulbs, but they're about 25, 30 bucks. They are 5,500K Calvin, um, but you don't need to spend that much. You can go to Home Depot and pick one up for a few bucks and put it in a lamp, put that lamp near your desk and make sure you don't have a lamp shade on it. It's just a straight bulb. Now you're gonna take those photographs you're going to have them in front of you and you're going to have that light, light pointing towards those photographs and then you're going to run a color calibration on your computer. So Mac has an immaculate color calibration that does the colors and the shades of highlights and, and shadows. And if you have a nice graphics card in your computer, it's going to have a nicer color calibration too. So use your graphics card uh, color calibrator over your computer's color calibration system. Um, go on to your program and you'll probably see color calibration there. Now, on the basic side, you can just go to your control panel on a PC and you can put in color and you'll see here uh, color management. Sorry guys, I'm only using a portion of my screen because my monitor is pretty big. So then you're going to go to um, advanced and you're going to go to calibrate display. And this is what I want you to do. You are going to make this smaller and put it off to your side. I'm going to close all of these windows and you are going to make Photoshop smaller and have it off to the side. And you are going to color calibrate while you are looking at the photographs that are in your hand and at your monitor. So I will bring up this photograph and I will start my color calibration. So I'll press next again, make it small, press next, next. And then you can start sliding this. And I want you to pay attention more to the images in Photoshop and the images on your hand that have that 5,500 K light on them. And I'm not so much what it's telling you here under the display. So you can go brighter or darker and then you got to press next, 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 next. And then you can go tweak your reds, your greens and your blues. And then when you're done color calibrating, if you still feel like it's not that good or it's not perfect, go onto your monitor and tweak the actual monitor menu calibration. So you can go in and tweak brightness and contrast and your own colors on there also until you get it to where it looks as close as possible to the images that you're holding in your hand. Make sure there is no ambient light in the room. So there's no light coming in from a sunset from your room. Make sure that most of the lights are turned off. Make sure that you don't have that lampshade on your lamp. If you have one of those desk lamps that actually points the light towards your images even better. Once you have that all done, you should have a monitor that is now color calibrated. Now, if you have a laptop, you're probably going to have to do this every two months with your regular home computer. I mean, every three to six months is fine. I go a long time without color calibrating and it's absolutely fine. It doesn't kick off um, my calibration pretty much ever, but in case you have that issue or you feel like something's off, just calibrate it again. Again, the spider is the easiest way to do it, but it's a little bit on the pricier side. And this is the way to do it 
at free or close to free. Now, every time you switch labs, I would definitely do this process all over again. Dump your old photographs, print new photographs, and put the same photographs up on your monitor and do the whole thing. Now listen, you may think that your monitor looks good, but I guarantee you, your monitor is not color calibrated. It never comes color calibrated. And most people like to watch movies or YouTube videos. So they're brightening up their screen or they're adding more contrast or they're putting it on movie mode or something. It needs to be on a custom mode and you need to be able to color calibrate. Now, if you're on a Mac and this didn't help you, look up on YouTube how to color calibrate a Mac. I've helped my friend do it and Mac is extraordinary with their on uh, in computer color calibration way better than a PC. Um, but it's absolutely imperative that you do this because every time that you think you're photoshopping an image and then you go to print it, it is not going to look the same. And you want to make sure that your images look identical to the images that you are seeing in Photoshop when you print them. How can you give somebody a print and yours is more orange or reddish or bluish or greenish? Now, I definitely recommend a pro lab over Costco, Target. I've worked at a lot of labs in my life, my younger life, and uh, they are they do not they are not as stringent in their um, checking their chemistry. In a pro lab, we're checking every day, sometimes twice a day, to make sure that all that chemistry is perfect and that every image is absolutely consistent all the time. So you can bet on it that when you send a print to a pro lab, it's always going to look consistent and right. Always. Unless they did something off, it is always going to look consistent and right. I have had problems with some labs, but in general, I almost never have problems. So this is an absolute necessity before you even start touching, you know, Photoshop and learning Photoshop and wanting to be a photographer. This is step one. There is no point to doing anything else. This is absolutely step one. Once you have that done, then we can go on and learn a little bit more about Photoshop. So that is it for today. I just wanted to make a basic video on how to color calibrate your images. Make sure that you go through all of your images as you're doing this and kind of check all of them and see how they're looking with the calibrations because if you have a sepia toned image or a black and white image, you have might have a color cast you're, you're not seeing in another image. So super important to do that. Also guys, please uh, check back because this will be a 10 part series. The next part is going to be how to lay out your Photoshop uh, palettes because you'll probably only use a few of the palettes that are in all these windows here. As a portrait photographer, you're not going to need most of the stuff that's in Photoshop. So guys, thank you very much. Please comment, comment anything. You loved it. You hated it. Uh, you want, you have questions. You want me to do a video on something else? Comment. If you comment, um, the algorithm on YouTube will help boost this video up. And I'm trying to give you guys as much free content as I can. So you guys don't have to pay for it. Um, so please make sure that you comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to choose happiness, choose love, choose joy, choose bliss every day, guys, every day. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a great day. The next video will be on how to lay out Photoshop.